When I built my first vertical garden, I knew I had gone too far as it was really hard to reach the fourth level. I knew watering the plants up there was going to be quite difficult. The only logical solution was to install a vertical drip irrigation system. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Hydro Gardening Channel, the home of vertical food gardening. Many people install drip irrigation systems in their gardens to save time and to use water more efficiently. I could not see any reason why I should not be able to do the same thing with my vertical garden. The first thing I did was to draw a plan of where I thought the pipes should go so the water would reach every section of the vertical garden. Once I knew the materials I was going to need to build the vertical drip irrigation system, it was time to go shopping. The list of materials included 13 mm irrigation pipe, that's about half an inch diameter, a pipe cutter to make sure the cuts would be made as straight as possible, 13 mm barb tees and elbows to connect all the pipe sections together, clips to secure the teeth and elbows to the pipe ends, clamps to fasten the pipe sections to the vertical garden frame, an adapter to connect a hose to the irrigation system, a hole puncher to make holes on the pipes. I also bought 4mm PVC tubing to take the water from the pipes to the drippers and 4mm barb joiners to connect the tubing to the pipes. I already knew how long each pipe had to be, so the only thing I had to do was to straighten the pipe roll, measure the pipe sections and cut. As I was going to connect the irrigation system to a hose, I had to insert a hose adapter to the end of the main pipe. I use clamps to secure the main pipe to the vertical garden structure. As water had to move up from the main pipe, I had to insert an elbow at the other end of the main pipe. I had little space to work at the corner of the vertical garden, but in the end, I managed to fasten the pipe the way I wanted. The irrigation system was meant to bring water to all the different levels of the garden, so I had to insert a T to allow the pipe system to continue up and also to go laterally. At the end of the lateral pipe, I inserted an end plug to stop the water flow at that point. After that, I just needed to keep repeating the same process for the second, third and fourth level of the vertical garden. As the vertical garden frame did not have lateral beams on levels 3 and 4, I had to use cable ties to attach the pipe sections to the metal mesh. It worked just fine. Now that I had all the pipe sections connected and attached to the garden frame, the next task was to join the tubing to the pipes. To do this, I had to make holes on the pipe sections and insert the joiners. Mm -hmm. 
Hot water is meant to do the job of connecting the tubing to the joiners a bit easier. But maybe the water was not hot enough because the job was hard anyway. I used hot water to soften the other end of the tubing as well, so I could insert the drippers. It was finally time to connect the hose to the main pipe and test the system. Unfortunately, the system did not work as well as I expected. The drippers delivered too much water and the water was moving through the soil too quickly and the middle of the planters remained dry. To solve this problem, I added a third dripper in each planter to see if the water distribution would improve. Yes, the water distribution improved, but still the water was flowing through the soil too quickly. Probably the water pressure was too much for the system. Clearly, I have more work to do to develop a vertical irrigation system that actually works. I'm sure I'm close to a good solution, and I'm already testing a few ideas on my second vertical garden, which I will share with you later on this year. Hopefully, I will be able to show you an improved system. See you then.